Okay. Um, so uh, let's get uh, down to talking about a, a use case. Beautiful. Let's at, do it. At this point. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to erase this. And what we're going to do, okay, I'm going to get my hypothetical company. Uh, I'm going to say they're an architectural firm. Cool. Okay? And just plucking that out of fairly thin air. Art Vandalay. And um, so we plucked that out of fairly, Industries. fairly thin air. And it's an architectural firm. Uh, lots of video for, they, they, lots of big CAD files, lots of video. And they have, uh, let's say it's a bigger firm and they got a couple hundred employees. Cool. So they got lots of data to store because video and CAD files, but, uh, but it's not mega, mega like a video production company or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to pluck this out of thin air and say they had 500 terabytes. Cool. Okay. And let's get down to the criteria that they want to hit. So 500 terabytes. And... What are they trying to achieve? They're trying to achieve, and, and they're growing. So, mm -hmm. and of course, everybody has data bloat. Everybody has to deal with data bloat. So when you set up a storage cluster, you always want to leave some extra capacity into the day you put it in there. 100%. And, and Ceph has that inherent scalability. Yeah. So here's what we want to achieve. Uh, here's what the client wants to achieve. They want to set up storage cluster. They want to get rid of single point of failure. Why? Well, you know, same thing as in 45 drives here, we are, a network goes down and uh, you know, the cubicles and somebody's head up. pops yeah. up and the conversation there at the decibel level goes up and nothing happens. So we want our storage to go. Yeah. So we want no single point of failure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we want scalability. And let's say we want storage efficiency. Okay. okay? So we're going to go with the ratio coding. Okay. Okay. So, and let's just to make this exercise easy. And I'm kind of fudging this by doing 500. I'm going to put 10 terabyte hard drives. Cool. Okay. And this is noting that what I set up happens to be way within, you know, for 45 drives, you get almost a petabyte in a box. And uh, what we want to do is we want to start specifying what we put in here. I just want to make this real, make, make this example real. Um, and uh, give me something reasonable that's got some storage efficiency. You're starting off with three servers. You can take that into account. And we're doing a basic uh, erasure coding. And, uh, and, and uh, yeah, we don't want a single point of failure. So that, that's, we, we've already spelled something out there, right? That says failure domain. So let's go through that. Why don't you tell me, uh, okay, I want to create a big storage pool. Okay, okay so uh, your first key indicator there, storage efficiency is key to you. Okay. So that right there says, let's, let's try to do this with erasure coding. Policy is equal to EC. Okay, so. And, 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 oh yeah, and we had one other thing that's going to specify right here. No single point of failure. No single point of failure. So that says failure domain. We're going to have to be in the host. Is equal to host. So we got that set up. Okay. And media, uh, you know, media type is just. We'll just use spinners for now. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, yeah, hard, hard drive. HDDs. Beautiful. Okay. So we got our start. So we got our uh, our three parameters set. We got one other thing because we got EC. We have K. We so we got to choose our K plus M. So in this example, it, it's kind of limiting on what we can choose. Uh, the key thing you got to remember here is the sum of K plus M. You have to have that many of your failure domains. So if we're at the host, and that means our sum of data and parity chunks have to be equal to Okay. Because each one has to live on a different host. Okay. okay, so that leaves us with a two plus and, one. And K plus M has to be that minimum, right? <coughs> I can have more of them, but oh yeah, 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 yeah for, sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yep. Um, yep. You got okay. it. So, so let's do a. I'm going to write upside down here. Uh, a two plus one. Okay. K is equal to two. M is equal to one. My only other option would be one or two. Uh, and then uh, you and, and, and one and two is just ends up being a three wrap, right? Pretty much, yep. <laughs> so I have one K, one chunk of data, and I have two parity stripes for my one chunk of data. That's, and that's just a three wrap. Yep. That's a, a roundabout way to a three wrap. Yep. So, so it's two plus one I get. So that's equivalent to a, you know, it's the protection of a rate five. It's a rate five, five yeah. 100%. Yep. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, so you get, uh, you get your, um, you can lose up to half your storage, because remember, it's M divided by K. 
So one fifty uh, percent of your stores can go down, and yep. you're still uh, laughing. No, I can't have fifty percent go down because it's three, and I can't actually, and I'm at that failure domain domain host. So, but in theory, it could go down if I have larger numbers. Y you got it. Sorry, when I start this with three, when I put more hosts on as we scale up our our server, I can lose half them. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I guess yeah, the best way to say that here is you can lose one host. Because okay. you've got one, you've got, one host you need two now. things to rebuild from. Yeah. So, there you go. Uh, and okay. uh, storage and efficiency. Storage efficiency. We're looking at a two divided by two plus one. That's 66%. Two thirds, 66% storage efficiency. Yep. Yeah. So, okay. we hit your first criteria. We got you the best storage efficiency we, you can get, and there's no single point of failure. Okay. So, I got it. <clears throat> I'm going to write this down. Let me choose another. I love having these colored markers. Nicole, our marketing director, mm. got us these things. It's pretty good, eh? Well, it's good living. Uh, so we've got 66%. And that's the key value right there. That's that number you need to pick the right number of hard drives to get your 500 terabytes. That's 66%. So if to do that, to get the number of hard drives we need, we want 500 terabytes worth. So I, I need 50 hard drives worth of raw capacity at 66% efficiency. So I need, um, yeah, I need another half of that on top of it. Mm -hmm. So I need 50 hard drives, so I need 75. You got it. 75 times, times 10 terabytes. 10 terabytes is my first kick at sizing this thing to get just the data that I want to put on there, this capacity I want right now. Yeah. What else? We got a 90% rule. We like to say 90% rule. Give yourself 10% above what your usable space is because you don't want to expand your cluster when you're literally seconds away from hitting 100%. Nothing wants to be full. No file system wants to be full. So uh, so we're going to put in uh, about 82 hard drives. And uh, so, yeah, let's say, so we end up with 82 hard drives that we want to put in this. Sure. Sounds good. And uh, I think we want to uh, bump that up a little bit because we... Uh, well, let's let's we, go we, to 90 because we can let's go do to the 90, math easy. Because we can do the math easy. Yeah. So we take that, we'll round it up to 90. So we've got 90 10 terabyte hard drives, which of course I distribute evenly. You got it. Those machines. Yeah. So I need 30 hard drives per machine. You got it. And that'll give you 500 terabytes usable. With the erasure code and the host policy, we said and the ability to have one server drop out anytime. You got it. Okay, so machines. Mm -hmm. I could buy obviously I could buy a thirty drive machine yep. and fill them up one hundred percent, or I could get a forty five or sixty and have spare capacity. You got it. One up my storage pool. What do I do? I okay. So so if I did that, let, let's say we bought that these were sixty drive machines. Okay, and I put thirty in when I start. Okay. Okay. The boss rolls down, and the boss says, "I, I, I need some more storage capacity, and uh, and I'd like to double this." How do you double it? Now it's obvious that I, I, I double it by getting another thirty drives and plugging, physically plugging them in. Yep. And what do I do? You know, I'm I'm my I'm the storage administrator. What do I have to do software wise to add them in? Okay. Um, we use you use a tool called Ansible. Really, is when these are deployed. It, w there's an automated framework kind of tool that uh, installs and manages your whole cluster. And when you need to add to it, you just use that same tool again and you add. Um, so let, let me put it this way. When I first built this thing, I defined the 30 hard drives in each one yep. and their names. Yep. And I ran my, my playbook and it installed everything and yep. my cluster's up. Okay, now you just popped 30 more drives in there. What does the user have to do? The user has to go into that one configuration file yep. Add the names of the other thirty disks and run it again. And that's it, all. It'll keep your cluster going, and then as it chugs away in the back, you can watch his dashboard and see the number of OSDs and the total capacity you have in his cluster. Just so physically, I just hot swap them in. Nobody missed a beat. Yep. And 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 let's say I was uh, having a bad day and I knocked the power cord out in one of those servers uh, while I was doing it. I have enough failure protection that that didn't, you know create people popping up in cubicles yeah, so that 100%. cluster's still going. I could put the power cord back in, boot that machine up. Yep. If a machine went down and came back up, Brett, what would I have to do to, to bring it back on? Oh, actually with Ceph, absolutely nothing. It like, just by the time it reboots if, 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 Such that there wasn't such a failed part in it that maybe it, it wouldn't boot. But for example, like if it just you pulled the power plug out, just plug it back in, turn it back on, 
and then just go watch your dashboard. Okay. And then when the server comes back, Okay. It'll, it'll say the host is back, and then you just see the OSDs popping okay, back I'm up. I've seen myself, I'm the storage administrator, I actually knock the power cord out. So I just plug it back in, and I just run out and get a cup of coffee quickly, pretend like nothing happened, and it's back up and going. Yep. Yeah. Hot swap my drives in, and then I go to Ansible and just go through the, the simple procedure, and it adds it in, and it's seamless, nothing stopped, no, no anything. You got it. Okay, let me uh, ask you next question. So we, we do that, and we expand it to its full uh, capacity mm -hmm. to those machines. The boss comes by and says, oh, I need some more storage capacity. So, and I got to put a new, uh, I, I go and I go to 45 drives, I order a new server, put it in the rack, and I put drives in. What do I need to do? So I physically put it in there, plug it in my network, obviously. Yep. And then what do I do software wise to add a new host into this? So you'd get it from us pre installed with CentOS 7 on it, and it would be sitting with no, it was just bare bone CentOS. So you plug it in, and you'd have to set up your networking. Make sure that it can ping. You've named it correctly. Yep. Uh, it communicate on the back end like it's supposed to. It can communicate yep. on the front end like it's supposed to. Perfect. Go back to your Ansible, and then in your config file under your OSD hosts, you put the the new fourth one you just named and run the script again. And it'll go through, see that the cluster's already there, but it'll see that this new fourth cluster is empty. It'll install all the packages it needs, bring the OSDs up, and then same as uh, the past example, you just. You sit there and you watch. So the difference with this is the manual intervention, pretty much a little extra work setting up networking and all that. But once you hit go, you just sit and watch and let it do all the work. Wow. Yeah. And that, it, it, it's such a key part of building Ceph because Ceph is complicated. There is, it, it's big. There's a lot of moving parts. But when you get the right kind of recipe set up for it, you can't screw it up because you're just doing the same thing over and over and over again. Nice. So it's lo low work to administer, low work to... Yeah. Yeah, and big shout outs to the uh, to the crew at Ceph who kind of made the Ceph Ansible packages that a lot of people like myself have been able to adapt and use. Actually, the, the, okay. the developers of Ceph are some incredibly helpful people. <laughs> right on. Very very nice.